Hey, 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 pedal people, it's Pedal Guy here. How you doing? Today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to set up your Hot Tone Ampero with Pro Tools first, and we're gonna get started right now. Well, hey, it's Scott at the Pedal Guy here. How you doing? Now, if this is your first visit to our channel, make sure you take a second and click on that subscribe button down there and ring that bell so you can stay up to date with all of our videos. And if you're watching this on Facebook or Instagram, be sure to like and follow us so you can stay up to date with all of our activities because we do post daily and we'd love to hear from you. Well, the purpose of this video is to help show you how easy it is to set up your Hot Tone Ampero with Pro Tools first. A lot of people practice with the Ampero and then they want to start recording it. And there seems to be a little bit of confusion on how to do that. So what I'm hoping is in this video is that I'm gonna, it's going to uh, kind of clear the runway a little bit for you and make it very simple and very straightforward on how to do this. Now, the purpose of this video is to show you how to set it up, not how to use Pro Tools but how to simply set it up in Pro Tools so you can start using it. There are plenty of videos out there that will show you how to start using Pro Tools very easily, and uh, I think you'll, you'll definitely get something out of it. But in this case here, we're just gonna show you how to set this up as an audio interface and get it going. So before you get started though, make sure that you go to the Hot Tone website and you download the Hot Tone audio driver from their site. We will leave a link in the video description so you can find it for yourself and that will help you get your Hot Tone Ampero connected up with your PC or Mac easily. Um, in fact, actually, if you're on the Mac, you don't even have to download it. This is just for the PC only, really. So uh, just make sure if you're on a PC that you download that and you're good to go. So now without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to set this up with Pro Tools first. And it's very simple to use. Uh, Pro Tools First is a free software that you can download from Avid's website. And we'll leave a link in the video description so you can find it for yourself. Now, uh, one thing I will note is that it's incredibly limiting because they only want you to have just a little taste of what Pro Tools can do. And then they uh, will uh, sell you a monthly license fee or I believe there's an outright purchase program available as well. So in either case, this is to just kind of give you a taste of what the product can do. And it's a very powerful application. It's the Kleenex of DAWs. So it's the, it's, the way to, it's the way to go if you really want to be compatible with every other studio out there. But of course, there are other alternatives and we will cover those in future tutorials like uh, Ableton Live and Reaper. And you know maybe we'll get around to some of the other ones at some point too. But those are the main three that I wanted to show uh, in this series. So in any case, let's just get to it. So um, if you've got Pro Tools up and loaded up, uh, and assuming, of course, that you have downloaded and installed the Hot Tone audio driver, this is how it works. Okay, we're gonna go to the setup drop-down menu, and here we'll go to playback engine, and we have our choice of the Windows audio device, which we don't want because that's the onboard audio interface on the sound card on the PC. We don't want that. We want the Hot Tone audio USB audio device. And Everything is set up actually from the control panel that Hot Tone provides, and I'll show you exactly what that means in a second here. So we'll click OK. Now we'll go to Setup and we'll go to Hardware. And this brings up the control panel for the Ampero. Uh, so if we go to Status, you can see that the Ampero is the selected device. This would change depending on what uh, Hot Tone product you've got plugged in and, using, and are using as an audio interface. Go to Format. Uh, this is where you can select between 16 bits and 24 bits. Um, then we go to buffer settings. Okay, now here's where the fun it comes into play here. So the buffer setting determines the latency, meaning the delay between playing a note and hearing a note. Now, ideally, you want that buffer setting to be low enough so that there's not going to be a lot of latency because you want to monitor in real time and listen to audio tracks playing back and you want to use effects and all that good stuff, okay? Here's the thing though, this buffer setting will differ depending on your computer. So my computer is different from your computer and it's different from your friend's computer and your friend's friend's computer. My point is, is that you will need to do a little bit of experimentation with the buffer setting to get, this, get, to get the most uh, ideal setting for you. Um, because if it's too low, if the buffer setting is too low, you're gonna get pops and clicks and digital distortion, all really nasty things. What you want is you want a nice clean sound and that is achieved by finding the correct buffer setting. Now, once you've done that, you're good to go. 
So uh, in this case here, uh, I've used 128 samples, but as you can see from the drop-down menu here, it can go anywhere from eight samples all the way up to 2048. So the only time you would ever use 2048, by the way, is when you're playing back a whole lot of audio tracks and you don't care about recording anything because you're not recording at that point. So just keep that in mind. Uh, also make sure that you select safe mode for, be for the best audio performance. Uh, these other tabs, volume, info, about really nothing to worry about there at all. Go ahead and close it. And now at this point, what we want to do is we want to go to track, the track drop-down menu. We want to create a new track. Now, since this is a stereo product, you probably want to record a stereo track. So you want to record stereo. Um, and you want to do an audio track, not an auxiliary input or a master fader or any of that. You want to go with an audio track. And ticks, you, you don't need to worry about that. You have a selection between ticks and samples. For this point right now, don't worry about that. And just go ahead and create. And now you've got your first audio track. And from here, what you can do is you can change the size of the audio track if you want to and make it big. Um, you can also uh, monitor the audio track. Because if I turn up the guitar right now, you can hear, obviously you can hear the Ampero. That's coming through. Okay, but what you can't hear is you can't, what you can't see though is you can't see audio coming back from Pro Tools, right? That's because we need to either turn on track input monitor. You can now see that there's audio signal being detected by Pro Tools. Um, and if you want to record that, all you have to do is just arm it for recording, then go up to the transport control in the upper right corner, record enable your track, your song, and then go ahead and hit play. And now you're recording your first track. And that's literally as easy as it gets. Really. I, I've been doing this for a really long time, guys. And I got to tell you, that's, this, this is like one of the easiest things to do. Uh, as far as the setup goes. So if I play this back, there you go, you recorded the track. Now, I'm gonna show you something that's really cool about the Ampero. If we go into Global and we go to USB Audio, we have the selection of going with an, uh, recording an effect or recording it dry. And the same thing goes for the left channel as well as the right channel. So what that means is when I turn on the uh, monitoring, you're gonna hear two different signals. Now it's a little hard to hear with this patch. So what I'm gonna do is actually go to another patch. There you can hear it there. Okay, so if I go back to global, let's go back to the USB audio and let's turn on the effect. Okay, so we're not, we're hearing two different signals here, just so you're clear about this. You're hearing the signal coming from the Ampero natively, and then what you're also hearing is you're hearing the audio going from the Ampero to the computer via USB and then back into the Ampero from Pro Tools. So that's where that latency comes in. Um, and uh, in this case here, you're hearing kind of a little bit of a delay, right? Um, so if you want to take away that, you can use the monitor level and you can still, you can hear it coming from the Ampero, but, and you can also see that it's in Pro Tools, but that's not a setting you want to keep it on all the time because if you're playing tracks back, you need to be able to hear what's coming back from the computer, don't you? So uh, just putting that out there for you. Um, now, the record mode, you can choose to select uh, effect or dry. So here's the difference audibly. Now what it's done is it is playing the effects natively on the Ampero. But what you're also hearing is you're hearing what's coming back from Pro Tools, which is a dry signal because it's sending a dry signal to the uh, to Pro Tools. And I'll show you exactly what that looks like. So let's arm that track again. Let's start recording and just play a couple of chords. Go ahead. 
and hit stop. All right, now let's play back what we got. And there you go. You got a you got a dry track now. So what can you do with that? Well, you've got all of these effects built into Pro Tools. You can go hog wild, and you can really do some amazing things with it as far as like the, and unleash the power of the DAW, so to speak. Uh, so that's one of the advantages of going that way. You can also use that as a form of reamping if you want to. That's a whole other ball of wax but it just gives you another option. So that's a very cool feature. And you'll find that with a lot of the other all-in-one multi-effects units like this, or like the Head Rush or the Helix. I believe the Helix does it as well. I, I don't know, I haven't used one, so I can't tell you for sure. But regardless, that's how it works and that's how simple it is. So um, that brings us to the end of how to do this, but um, we will be doing this same setup video for Ableton Live, and we will also be doing the same setup video for Reaper as well. So I invite you to come back for those. So that concludes our video on how to set up your Hot Tone Ampero with Pro Tools first. Now we'll also be going back and doing this with Ableton Live, and we'll also be doing this with Reaper as well, because those are all two, those are also both highly regarded uh, digital audio workstations. But for more information on this pedal and the other pedals that we carry, please visit us at thepedalguide.com. Also, be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks, and have a great day.